For all the crazy shit that synthesizers can do, it's surprisingly difficult to recreate the subtle variations that happen naturally with acoustic sounds. And this has been a problem since the very beginning. Even Wendy Carlos stopped using the Moog synth that she made famous because she found that she just couldn't get the variation that she was looking for. If you open up your DAW and start with a basic patch, and you play the same note a few times in a row, you will get 100% the exact same output every single time you play a note. But sounds in real life don't work like this at all. Like if you play an open guitar string a few times in a row, you'll get all this variation in the timbre, intensity, and the duration between each note. Just like if I snap my fingers a few times in a row. Obviously, there are a bunch of different ways to deal with this problem, like modulating the parameters of your synth over time using LFOs or automation. But even then, it's still really hard to match the level and subtlety of the variation that occurs with acoustic sounds. That's one of the things that I love about physical modeling. You can get a ton of subtle variation from note to note without having to modulate any parameters at all. But how does that work? Most synthesizers use what's called a signal-based approach to reproducing sounds. That means that they only try to reproduce the output signal of an instrument, and they don't care about how the internal workings of the synthesizer relate to the acoustic behavior of the instrument itself. So for example, it's pretty easy to recreate the sound of a marimba using an FM synth. You just take a frequency, you modulate it by a couple other frequencies, you add some noise, you change the envelopes, and bink, 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 you, you got the sound of a marimba. But the process of frequency modulation has nothing to do with the acoustic behavior of a marimba. It just happens to produce a similar result. Physical modeling synthesis, on the other hand, uses mathematical models to describe the acoustic behavior of things like plucking a string, striking a piece of wood, or blowing into a tube. If you pluck a string while it's in motion, you'll get a slightly different result than if you plucked it when it was still. Just like you'll get different results if you pluck it in the middle versus towards the end, or you pluck it as hard as you can, or you barely graze it. All these variables are taken into account with the mathematical models. So the imaginary string vibrating back and forth in your computer's tiny little dome will recreate a lot of the same natural variation that a real life string would. But what really takes it to the next level is that you aren't constrained by physical reality. You can easily make a string that gets thicker over the duration of each note, or a drum that gets smaller if you hit it harder. Or you could make a tube that if you say the number six, a little weasel comes out of it and pees directly onto your ear. I think the reason why physical modeling synthesis isn't more popular is just that it works differently than the other kinds of synthesis that people are more used to. But really, it's a totally intuitive way to get really interesting and natural sounding sounds. So I'm gonna use a couple different synths in this video because what I'm really trying to teach you is the fundamental concept. I think that once you understand the fundamentals, it doesn't really matter what specific synth you use. But I will go through a couple different ones at the end of the video so you, you can get an idea of what's out there. So here's the basic signal flow. You have your sounding object, like your string or tube. And then you have some kind of input that sets that object into motion. It's often a virtual mallet or filtered noise. If your input is a mallet, then you'll be able to change its imaginary physical qualities, like its rigidity, its size, or material. Lots of synths will let you use filtered noise as an input. That's good for woodwindy sounds or anything you want sustained. You'll be able to change the parameters of the filter and the envelope too. Then there's the actual physical model. You should be able to choose between different programs like strings, different kinds of strings, membranes, which is like a drum, plates, which is like a piece of metal or a plate reverb, and a tube or a pipe. Then you can adjust the parameters of the model itself. That'll be things like pitch, decay time, brightness, and usually some kind of position control. That's like where on the imaginary model the contact was made. Lots of synths will let you move around the virtual microphones on the objects. And that can be a nice way to get some variation between the left and right channels. Then you can map other parameters like pitch and velocity to the parameters of the physical model. I really recommend this for getting more expressive and natural sounding results. It's also 
also a great way to get those really trippy, physics-defying patches. All right, now we're gonna look at some example patches that I made. We'll change around the parameters and see how they affect the results. This will be a good way to get an idea of the different synths that are out there too. Okay, so I actually lied. There's only gonna be one example. Uh, I recorded two and the second one just felt totally redundant, so. Uh, one apparently is totally enough. So this is Collision for Ableton Live made in collaboration with Applied Acoustic Systems. I love it because it's really straightforward and it has great velocity and key tracking capabilities. It's very easy to map MIDI pitch and velocity to the parameters of the synth, which as I said earlier is super key for getting a nice varied sound. We'll start by listening to the patch and then we'll do a sort of macro look at each section and then we'll zoom in and look at the individual parameters. <laughs> Okay, so this is the resonator section. This is where you choose the physical model. Collision has two resonators, and on my patch, I've got one set to marimba and the other one set to string. Let's hear them individually. <laughs> Then we've got our input section here. This is the imaginary mallet, and here's the filtered noise. Let's hear them individually as well. Okay, so this is the mallet section. As you can see, we've got volume, noise, stiffness, and color controls. Here's where you can map the velocity and key tracking to those parameters. So what this is saying here is that if the velocity of an incoming MIDI note is full, then the note the synth plays will be 70% louder than if the velocity was as low as possible. Let's hear how the sound changes as I change the noise and stiffness of the mallet. Now let's look at the filtered noise. Here we can change the type of filter, like low pass, high pass, etc. And then we can change the cutoff frequency and the resonance on this cute little graph. Then we have the envelope. This can do quite a lot. I have it mapped to the filter cutoff here as well. The decay time really does a lot to shape the sound. Now let's look at the resonator section. Here we've got the tuning section. It's also got a cute little built-in pitch envelope. These are probably the most important controls. Here is where you change through the different models. Here's the membrane and plate and tube. Then decay time is pretty self-explanatory. This material setting changes the spectral response of the model. Okay, let's hear the patch again and notice how the material parameter of the resonators changes as we move across the different registers and how the notes with higher velocities have a pretty different timbre than the ones with lower velocities. All right, and before I go, here are a couple other physical modeling synths that I like. This is Kaibo from Moderna Labs. It has a ton of really cool features, like a granular oscillator as an input rather than a mallet or filtered noise, and it has two types of resonators ran in series with different programs, which is pretty cool, and it has this amazing two-dimensional LFO, which gets great organic control signals. This one is the Chromophone, also from Applied Acoustic Systems, so it has the same sort of sounds as the Collision synth, but it is a little bit more light on its feet. The collision synth does crash from time to time, so if you're having problems with that, then the chromophone is a good sort of lighter alternative. And this one is called Substantia. I'm a little bit less familiar with it than the other ones, but it has a cool sample as input feature, and it has a ton of really nice programs. 
All right, that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, this was my first tutorial, so um, if you want me to do more, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to do some more. Um, I was thinking maybe modular synthesis, uh, West Coast complex oscillators, like Buchla style. Anyways, hit me up in the comments if you're interested in that. Um, if you really like my videos, uh, definitely hit me up on Patreon, patreon.com slash soundsgoodchannel. You can get access to extra stuff, like you can get your name at the credits, you can get early access to the videos, you can get behind the scenes stuff so you can see all the amazing jokes that I make to myself, because um, I'm really funny. Um, yeah, so uh, if you want to help me out and you want to get some bonus extra stuff in the process, hit me up at my Patreon, patreon.com slash soundsgoodchannel. Thanks for watching! Bye!